All right, what's up, bud? Can you hear me? We're unmuted, and we're live through the magic of the internet. Let me just get rid of this little thing on your face real quick. Whoop, it's all whoop. Good. You, remember, you remember in um, Monsters Inc. Yeah. When um, he they, they there's the commercial right, and uh, Mike Wazowski he's so excited to um, be on TV, and then the Monsters Inc. logo uh, covers his face. It's like it's like that. You know, this, I don't. This I don't is exactly like that. that. Um, and, and <laughs> I mean, you, you you're <laughs> Mike, bro. <laughs> it's true. In fact, it's it's better if I'm not on the stream. No, nah, man. Anyway, it should only anyway. be your face on the stream, honestly. Um, anyway, uh, we're Church of Rifts. This is kind of like a test episode, almost like a run through. Um, and basically, what this is dedicated to is music that Emilio and I love. And what you guys love as well. Um, we're going to talk about local stuff, records that we like, mainly riffs and guitar tone and stuff like that. And uh, that's kind of what this is dedicated to. We want you guys to be part of the conversation as well. Uh, and we got uh, three records that we want to talk about and then some music headlines. What do you guys think about that? Huh? Yeah, we're going to jump right into it. Um... And yeah, I mean, we, we uh, what, Jay, we've been thinking about doing this for a little while now. Yeah. Um, we've kind of discussed, like, uh, a podcast or a show. Um, and we have, like, a little uh, website that we've got going. Um, it's not live yet. We're working out the kinks. Um, but we're hoping this is, like, a weekly or bi-weekly thing. We can bring in some friends, um, you know, because we have friends in, in a bunch of bands playing a lot of different types of music. So we just want to bring some, some light to that and, you know, just kind of talk about it and, and jump right into it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they see the audio might be a little bit distorted. I'll try and figure that out. But, um, yeah, so just like Emilio said, uh, not in this episode at the moment, but in the future, we do want to interview, couple people um showcase some music maybe talk about your future releases future shows things like that uh that's what this is going to be for um so as you can see right over here the first record we're going to talk about is uh hums inlet uh came out june 23rd it's a little bit old it's not like a new release but it is amazing um, they broke a 22-year gap between records. Uh, these guys lived and died in the 90s, basically. And it's amazing. It's uh, huge riffs. To w you get these wall of uh, tone-type songs. And uh, so some of these songs are really ambitious. They're very, uh, their longest track is nine minutes. Desert Rambler, which you know goes from that big, almost post-rock shoegaze wall of sound to like very low somber tones and stuff like that i mean what'd you think of that record emilio how do you feel about it i mean you know like this is um just to put it simply dude it's, it's a badass record like it, it doesn't sound too much like what uh they've done before but you can hear that they have some of that sound um like maybe that they had in like the 90s in there um, but it's, it's different, dude. Like there's a lot of big riffs in this record. Um, I think everything lands. Um, and overall, like it's, I, I have to imagine it's going to sit on a lot of top album lists uh, for this year. Yeah. And it's, um, it's really different from hum's writing style in general. Like, uh, when I think of hum, I think of like rocky guitar kind of with like some fuzz tone, uh, really catchy riffs and catchy vocals kind of like stuff you can dance to there's not much of that on this record um there's one song that's kind of in that vein and i would say that's step into you um it's the shortest song on the record it's four minutes um it's super dancey and uh it's it's really balanced like there's not i wouldn't say there's too much going on you're kind of hearing the same riff over and over again which is a lot of this record i mean like like this doomy stuff is usually uh repetitious but you know hum isn't really like that so they're right. they're definitely changing their sound with this record um but i wouldn't say it's like a continuation 
of their old stuff at all. Um, no, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that means, dude, Doom is back. Doom is back. Doom Finally. Is back. <laughs> like, <laughs> they were like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, let's write a Doom album. They say, you know, what, what are the kids like? Not this? Well, all right. Well, we'll go for it anyway. The kids always like Doom. Uh, they yeah. just didn't want to admit it, man. They want, uh, I mean, you got you got a point. Yeah, they want to, you want to seem edgy and shit. So you're not going to be like, oh, I like Doom. You know, that's not edgy, man. Come on. We need some What's violent edgy? riffs, man. What is, you know, in your opinion, <laughs> if you had to pick something with some edge, what's besides the edge, the wrestler, what's what's edgy to you? Uh, fucking hate breed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Inlet is definitely going to be my top 2020. Maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't say number one, but right. top five, maybe. Right. It's got, it's, it's, it's a good contender for like a lot of lists, man. I think it's going to sit high on a lot. And I, I kind of like, I kind of like the whole, these older bands kind of not releasing everything every year. Like, uh, for instance, Macedon. I mean, that's like every three, four years. But when they release something, it's kind of it sounds almost like lazy, predictable. I uh, I don't really like that stuff. Like it, it's also it's almost like a Metallica, for instance. You know, when we get a record from Metallica nowadays, there's only been two really. It's kind of like. Mm. It's it's weak. It's really predictable. It's definitely Metallica, but not what you want. And I would say the same thing about Macedon. So yeah. like bands like like Sleep, where there was this giant gap between releases, and out of nowhere they come out with this, the the Sciences, just a surprise boom release, just like Inlet here. And it was just fucking badass. It was awesome. Uh, the production was better. You know, like uh, Holy Mountain's a great record, but it's not really the fattest sounding record. And we're talking about Sleep, where you're gonna get hammered with the same riff for like eight minutes. You know, you want it to you want it to sound chunky, man. You want it to you want it to sound thick. The tone. And, no, you. It's yeah. a Sleep record. It has to sound dummy thick, dude. Dummy and, thick, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, just be care. A word of advice: just be careful talking about uh, Metallica like that. I'm pretty sure I saw uh, <laughs> Lars Ulrich uh, creep out of your closet behind you, and he was kind of just watching you for a uh, second. Uh. Um, you know, making sure you didn't say anything too bad about the band. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you, man. Like, it's cool when bands that had like. Uh, maybe a slight following or like uh, their their following came later in their careers like after they you know kind of stopped releasing music it's cool to see them release music after you know a break and it remains really good like because it's one thing to release an album after a long period of time and it be like okay um but what's cool about this is like, I think it can appeal to both old and new fans, but it doesn't feel like a fan service, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, it, it sounds like it's what they wanted to do. And I, I think right. that you could hear it and, I don't know, adds to the record. It doesn't sound like Hum, but it does sound like Hum. You know, um, but, like, for instance, like Desert Rambler and The Summoning, those two songs, you know, structure-wise, they're almost the same starts out with a great riff almost like a stoner rock riff and then right in the middle of the song goes real down sounds like you're in a cave you got the shoe shoegazy guitar um the vocals are a little bit flat on this record you know they got heavy reverb which isn't really the hum sound usually he tries to harmonize a little bit more with his music um but yeah like i would i would give it maybe i don't know i I hate giving scores like an eight out of ten it's a good record. I think everybody should listen to it. And if you couldn't okay. get past the first song, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna change notes here. No, I agree with that score though. I think like to, if if we had to give it um, some kind of numeric score, man, like for me, like eight, eight and a half, nine territory, because like it's okay. good. It's, it you is know, good. It, 
it, it works. It does exactly what it means to. Um, well, we saw some other releases this year um, by um, Elephant Tree. Yeah. Um, who uh, I don't know if um, you know everybody here is familiar with Elephant Tree, but they're um, you know stoner rock, uh, psychedelic kind of band, um, and they've got a fairly similar sound um, to what, what's going on in this record. Uh, maybe not quite as, as shoegaze, um, but yeah, man. To say this came as a surprise, like it's it, it was pretty cool to just see them drop a record like almost out of. And uh, I I want more bands to do this. You know, um, Acacia Strain just came out with a new record, and they did the the drip feed of singles. Where it's like, here's okay. a single. Two weeks later, here's another single, and you know, you that's a great way to build hype. Um, but I don't know. I think it's kind of lame, man. Like, maybe give us two singles, and then that's it. I know with like that genre of music, you you got to keep staying re- uh, relevant, but. They not. I wouldn't say that we'll talk about that record in the future, but it's just kind of. I like the long gap of, you know, maybe you're trying to find something that sounds like that band. You find something great, and then you know, a couple of years down the road, the your favorite band just releases a record. You know, like I, I like that release cycle. I doubt it's gonna. You know, that's a terrible way to keep yourself <laughs> relevant in the music scene, obviously, right. but. I like that release cycle. It's a nice surprise, and it leaves a lasting impact. Obviously, you know. Right, and and you know what, dude? Like, I don't want to go on about it uh, too long, but they're <clears throat> like, I I don't think they're trying to like make money here or like, you know, work this thing where it's like, hey, we got to stay relevant. This is a release for twenty years, dude. Like, this is just like we wanted to release music. Like, the time felt right, so we did. Um, I don't really know what their take is on it, but that's what I gather, you know, and some bands like, um, again, like Mastodon or Metallica, like they have to periodically release things to, to stay relevant or to make money. Um, and the result isn't always all that great. Yeah. Especially with Mastodon. Right. What the fuck? That's all I'm going to say. What are you, what are you laughing at? I see you, you're chuckling no, over look, there. Okay. Yeah. So I, jokes. I, I keep, uh, um, you know the whole shaking the nerves thing? Yeah. I know there's like four people watching us, so like, what the fuck? Um, I keep saying, um, I can't help it, dude. <laughs> so it's just, I'm going to be like that for a little bit. All right? Real That's talk. Okay. Listen, you are talking about hum. Sometimes you got yeah. hum. I'm talking about hum and I got my ums. <laughs> I hope, you're, you, you know, hope your stomach doesn't hurt too much. I'm drinking my, get... my Overwatch tea. <laughs> it's keeping me, it's a zesty lemon. It's keeping me nice and, you know, not nasally, I guess. I got a coffee here. Good. Let me see your coffee cup. Let's do a coffee cup review real quick. Let's see that thing. It's uh, Chicago. Hey, Chicago. <laughs> you know? Local, I like that. Uh, I just got uh, this blend from our uh, high school friend, um, oh. Ashley Lindo. Uh, she started brewing coffee, so wanted to support. Um, and yeah, got some coffee. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Well, from the coffee master himself, Emilio Acosta, or Acosto, depends where you're from. Um, yeah. <laughs> I uh, try <laughs> Ashley Lindo's coffee. You heard it here first, guys. Um, and girls. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to catch us live, go to twitch.com slash bogmanstomp. We're going to try to shoot for every Saturday. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. And of course, subscribe on YouTube. Hit the sub notification bell, and we will notify you when a new video drops. Have a great day.